Hello, my name is Plagia Paish. I'm an intuitive artist and a self-empowerment coach. I painted the artwork on the cover of Derek's first poetry book, Everything Rhymes With Orange. <laughs> and I'm here today to have a conversation with Derek about this work. Gloucestershire-based artist and writer Derek Doran has been variously described as quirky and surreal, as a shark basking in a sea of words, and as a poet who enjoys rooting out affectation and pomposity. He can also be described more prosaically as a bus driver, the latest profession from which he currently draws artistic inspiration. His first poetry collection, Everything Rhymes with Orange, was recently published by Black Eyes Publishing UK. What a great introduction. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Thank you so much for embracing the idea of recording this conversation. Uh, I know that I had a few questions to yeah, ask. I was curious yeah. about some of the um, um, poems and the process about writing a book. So I'm glad that you were open to this idea. No, I, I'm very curious to, uh, to hear your questions. I'm uh, a little bit nervous as well, but okay. I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs> okay. I hope it'll be fun. Uh, right, so we'll start straight out. Mm -hmm. The first question I wanted to ask you is like, when did you first start writing poetry? Uh, oh, um, I think I've written, I've always enjoyed writing since I was a kid. Um, I mean, I had a couple of really good English teachers when I was going through school who were <clears throat> very encouraging. Um, as far as poetry goes, uh, I think when I was a, a teenager, Maybe all teenagers go through that phase where they write terrible poetry. Um, so I, I definitely remember writing stuff when I was kind of 15, 16. Um, and I imagine them as songs. Uh, oh. and, I, and I still think of my poems today as, as songs, really. Uh, that's why a lot of them have kind of repeating choruses. Um, okay. But I'm really glad that uh, that, that was in the sort of pre-internet era and there are no uh, recordings of, of anything I wrote back then but yeah I mean I, I've always I've always enjoyed writing mm -hmm. yeah okay and like one of the biggest questions like one mm -hmm. thing is to write poetry yeah. and a lot of people write poetry in different styles but mm -hmm. you've chosen performance poetry so tell me a bit about why do you feel attracted to it um, it's 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 something that's come as a bit of a surprise to me really it's only in the last two years that uh, I've become a performance poet. Um, I was <clears throat> I was living in Spain um, for eight years, mm -hmm. from 2010 to 2017, uh, and I was working as an English teacher. And before that, I'd worked in IT. I just had a desk job basically, and uh, I was hopeless with um, speaking in public, or okay. doing presentations, that type of thing. But working as a teacher kind of brought me out of myself quite a lot mm. um, and when I decided to come back to the UK I saw I was looking at the the area I was going to settle in I was I was looking around on the internet to see what was going on in the kind of um, arts world uh, and, I, and I saw that uh, performance poetry seemed to be a thing and it just struck me I just thought wow yeah this is something I want to do it came out of the blue okay really. um, and it, it surprised me as much as anyone else I just thought, yeah, I want to have a go at this. Wow, that's very brave. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it sort of was, but it's one of those things. I think when I was in Spain, I, I did change my outlook on life a lot. And uh, it's definitely something I wouldn't have done earlier. And I would have been terrified to do it. In fact, the first time I performed, uh, I was, well, the very first time I went with the intention of performing, mm -hmm. uh, it was during the, the Gloucester Poetry Festival, um, I, I bottled out, I, I ducked out. When they when they were going around asking for names for the open mic, I had a couple of poems in my pocket and I just thought, no, I, I just can't do it. And I, I went home and I was furious with myself. And there was another event a couple of nights later and I thought, come on, you've got to do it. Uh, and I asked my daughter to come along and I told her, don't let me run out without, <laughs> without getting up on that stage. Um, and yeah, it was, um, it was a nerve wracking thing to actually go up to the mic. Um, but it 
it's just like uh, you know taking a plunge it, it's it's that metaphor of just diving in and it's uncomfortable for a few seconds and then um, it was like yeah I, I can do this I, I like it I wasn't very good I was terrible first time but okay has it become easier how, or do you, do you really enjoy it why why have you continued to do it what what keeps you t you know back going back it's such a buzz uh, um, it, you know the, the first time i got up i was very nervous and you you, you imagine that you're terrible and no one's going to be interested but people listen to what you've got to say and um i just it just felt um it just felt good to to speak the words that you'd, you'd written, you know, and, and I, you watched, um, I watched other people, and to me, they were like, they were way ahead of me, people who'd probably been doing it for a long time, mm. and I was just mesmerized by the whole thing, the atmosphere, um, you could see what was possible, you mm. could see how, um, how people were delivering mm. in their own style, uh, that I just got swept up in the whole thing, really. But uh, what I was asking just now was also how has it become easier for you to step up, or or what other challenges? As in, like as you started doing it more, it, it, are there different challenges? Yeah, yeah, because you're always trying to push yourself to be better, so mm. you're never entirely satisfied. And one now that I've been, I've, I must have done over a hundred gigs now, mm. uh, and I, obviously I've I've, uh, I've repeated a lot of the same poems. You know we're human we're not robots so you can you can deliver one poem mm. brilliantly one night you could do the same poem two nights later and it's completely different you, you don't deliver it as well mm. or the audience is uh, a different audience mm. um, the mood and the atmosphere is different so you, you start to um, to have different uh, you, you learn different things and you learn more about what can go right and what can go wrong the first time you know the first few times you just want to get up get the poem done as quickly as possible and then sit down and you think that was great but also terrifying mm -hmm. as you get more experience you know you, you learn more subtleties okay. and um, I think I still get nervous especially if I haven't been up to the mic for two or three weeks mm -hmm. I, I get nervous but it's kind of um, a nervous anticipation rather than a fear okay. you know, mm -hmm. so yeah it, it, it got easier um, but I'm kind of more demanding of myself as well. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that is, is connected to, to, to this the questions or what you've mm -hmm. just said is like as a reader and listener yeah. to of your poetry, I find that there's a difference in seeing the poems in written form and mm. actually seeing you and listening to you perform. Yeah. So do you also feel that there's a difference and what's it like for you? Um, there is a difference and sometimes you don't know until you actually read a poem aloud some words don't work some words look great on on the page mm. uh, and sometimes um, you're going for um, a visual look w w uh, of, of the words uh, how they how they look on, on the paper when you actually get up and speak them mm. that's you know it's a different it's a different um, animal altogether and I've changed words in poems because um, only after I've gone up and, and spoken the poem do I realise a word doesn't work, mm. uh, or I've just automatically added one in that's not there on the page? Um, speaking a poem definitely adds a whole new layer to the to the piece because um, you are you, you never read the poem the same way twice, you know. So uh, and obviously the way that you speak, the, the where you can put pauses, where you can put emphasis, mm. um, you don't always read them the same way mm. from night to night. You, you might, it depends on what mood you're in, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, there's a whole new layer that, that gets added on to a poem when, when it becomes a spoken piece, mm. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Like, and also you've, you've already explained a little bit of the process mm. of your writing process and how you make changes. Yeah. But I, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your writing process and what inspires you. When you know what happens that you you know for you to what comes in or <coughs> what do you see what catches your eye that mm. gives you inspiration. And what's your process from that? Um, I don't have a set process for actually writing. So sometimes I'll tap things away on the laptop. Sometimes it's a pen and paper. Um, 
in their house or sometimes in a cafe. Um, it might be um, a, a, th a word or a sentence I've overheard somebody say. It might be something that just popped into my head that I then expand on. Um, what I really like is is taking mundane things. Mm. And um, I, like, I like absurdity and comedy because I think you, you can you get a lot of insight about life from those sort of things so innocuous situations I mean my, my job as a bus driver now is uh, is great for for this sort of thing but but I think anyone anyone whatever job they do can can look at um, look at the mundane and abstract something from that um, I, I also get definitely get ideas that there's a period when when you're asleep that time just when you're beginning to wake up mm. um, you're not awake but you're not asleep I always find that's a really interesting time where you amazing ideas come mm. into your head once you're fully awake the ideas can often seem ridiculous but if you if you can um, if you can remember something mm. that you were thinking in, in that little golden period mm. uh, maybe write down a few sentences or a few words sometimes that uh, I've had a few good poems that have come from from that kind of uh, thought, you know, mm. I don't. I mean, I don't overanalyze it because I don't fully understand it, um, and I just accept it. You know, it's there, so use it. You know, um, but yeah, I, I, I think there's lots of different ways of, of being inspired, um, and I can go, I can go weeks and not have any inspiration. Um, once you start writing, though, I think you tap into something um, subconscious. So maybe something that's been in your background, it been, it been, uh, you've been mulling over. Mm. Maybe subconsciously, a lot of that will sometimes come out. And sometimes I write and I think, oh, where's that come from? And, uh, you know, and a poem could take uh, half an hour, or it could take uh, it could take a few days. You know? mm. Thanks. So um, you said that you've been in the poetry scene and the performance yeah. the poetry scene for about two years. Yeah. And so what what happened that this was the time for a book to come out? How did it happen? How did this book come about? Well, I was going through one of those periods of being in the doldrums um, earlier this year, maybe uh, over the winter, going into spring. I was low on kind of inspiration and it was becoming a bit of a slog. I think it was a natural reaction from um, going from nothing to plunging into this whole scene and going to lots and lots of gigs. Maybe it was just a natural rebalancing. Mm. Um, and I was at a gig and um, Peter and Josephine from Black Eyes were, were there in the, uh, in the audience and we, we got chatting. About, about stuff and I, and I said how I was feeling a bit flat mm. and uh, they, they'd heard me perform and they you know they, they suggested well why don't you why don't you think about putting a book together um, and even then you know you, you think um, it's something that that's a, that's a, uh, an offer that you, you you bite the hand off and you think yes fantastic mm. but I wasn't particularly enthusiastic it took me a week or so thinking over it and I thought well okay yeah yeah and once I sat down and looked at the stuff I'd written and, and performed over the previous 18 months I was I was surprised really by how much there was and it was enjoyable to put everything together mm. um, and it's helped me to to move forward again great mm. so um I know that you've written quite a, a bit of poetry mm. in the last few years. Yeah. How were you able to decide what poems went into this book? How was that kind of... Uh, well, I needed a bit of help. I, I okay. put together, um, I think, um, I think there's 31 or 32 poems and um, that I thought were, were kind of the, the better ones that I'd written um, with a, rep a representation of different styles and, and forms. Uh, and, I, and I took it to uh, to the guys at Black Eyes, and um, Josephine was 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 amazing because she just she she looked at the poems and she just put red lines through a few of them and said no, no, um, 
which was really, you know, I, I needed, I, it was good to have fr um, an independent pair of eyes or an outsider looking at the, the collection and saying, um, this doesn't work. Uh, or and, and the order I'd put them in, she, she shuffled them around. Mm. Um, I, I put uh, some other poems in to replace the ones that had come out. And I just, um, it, it was, a, it was a, a collaborative process, really. Mm. Um, you know, I took advice from the publishers about uh, what poems should go in, what shouldn't go in, mm. and, and the order of okay. the poems too. And I'm really happy with the, yeah. with the end product. Mm. I, think, I think between us, we did a good job, yeah. Yeah. And and how was the title chosen? You know, <laughs> everything rhymes with orange. Yeah, it's not it's not a title that I had in mind. I, I had a couple of titles that I, right. I thought were you know were, were, were possible. Uh, and when we we sat down and we were going through the poems, Peter and Josephine, almost in unison, when they saw I had there's a poem in here called Everything Rhymes with Orange, yeah. and they both said that's the title of the book, almost <laughs> together. Uh, and I thought, no, it's not. You know, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't my idea of a, of a title. But I don't know. Within half an hour, I thought, well, yeah, okay. Um, and I, you know, I couldn't imagine it being called anything else. I think it, it's, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the correct title, and uh, it's 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 the title of a poem in the book um, that they they thought was was uh, mm. would be a good fit. Yeah. I can't remember now what, what the titles were that I had thought of, but I think they're best forgotten, you know? So. <laughs> and do I dare ask you, ask you, what is your favourite poem in the book? Do you have a favourite poem? <sighs> well, you can ask me, yeah. <laughs> um, favourites change, you know, the, the favourite one week is... I, you, I mean, it's often it's the one you've, you've, written, you've just written, that's your favourite. Okay. Um, but I suppose um, I really like um, Helena. That's okay. a, I, I like that poem because it's one that I can actually recite from memory. Oh. Uh, that's a pre pretty lame reason, but uh, I know I, I, I like I like uh, I like that poem because it's got a bit of um, well, it's got a bit of comedy in, which which is always important. I think it, for me anyway. Okay. Um, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit surreal, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I also noticed, uh, just like your favorite poem is Helena, I noticed mm. there's a lot of women's names, yeah, as you know, as titles of your poems. <clears throat> and so there's Julia, India, no, no comment, Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there, there's, I've got four or five. Maybe did you notice that? Did you? Uh, I noticed it in hindsight. Okay. Yeah, when I was uh, when we got the collection together. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that that is a really uh, odd thing. I'm sure uh, some Freudian analysis <laughs> would uh, would reveal something about that. I, I Are they real women? Are these um, the women that you've met or interacted or? Yes. Yes and no, um, okay. and some of them are composites, you know. So, um, oh, okay. but yeah, I, I think um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to give anything away. But, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of uh, it's a funny thing with 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 poets. I, I think um, with, with with a lot of artists, um, we kind of um, we accept that they invent things that, mm. that um, you know uh, filmmakers or painters or authors um, tell fictitious stories but poets are kind of expected to just be straight and honest okay. you know especially in the spoken word scene mm. um, and I don't see why um, I mean I, I've, uh, poets have said to me that people have got angry with them when they've said when they when they've recited a poem yeah. a harrowing poem um, mm. That's an invention. That's not actually true. And people feel cheated. They think well, you made it up. And I don't know why that, why that's the case. Um, but having said that, I think um, even in fiction, there's a lot of truth, and you re reveal a lot about yourself mm. by the type of fictional stories or poems that you, that you write. Yeah. 
Um, but but th there are a lot of truthful, directly true things that I say in these poems about me. Yeah. But mixed up with a lot of fiction. So that um, really goes well with uh, with the question. I that think I've avoided the question about why <laughs> why there are so many named after women. Uh, no, no. What I what I actually want. I think you've done. I think you've done a good job mm. with with answering. But I okay. I kind of wanted to take over what you've just finished saying, mm. and add another layer to to the question. Is that yeah. I I know you a little bit. Yeah. So I find that there is quite a lot of autobiographical elements yeah, in your poetry course, yeah. and in your book, <clears throat> yeah. and um. So I I wonder if there is a particular poem that you mostly identify as or describes you best. Mm. You know, I think that each poem is kind of a snapshot of, of how you're feeling at the particular time you write it. Mm. Um, and I don't think there's one poem that would tell you everything about me. I think the book as a whole, if you read the book, you would get a good idea okay. of, of, of the real me, if you like. Um, mm. I, I, um, the Man with the Negative Charisma was definitely um, a conscious attempt to write something autobiographical. That's how I saw myself okay. at the time. Um, but I, yeah, there's, there's, there's bits of me in all of them. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I've also read some of your more recent poetry mm. and looking back at, back at what you've written and shared in your book and also what I've read more, more recently, yeah. I feel like something is changing and you're being a little bit more open and more direct about yourself mm -hmm. in the poems. You yeah. still use comedy and yeah. wordplay. I, I would say you're kind of hiding a little bit behind mm. those, but it's, you know, it works. Like they make for funny and interesting poetry. <laughs> but um, do you agree that you don't feel maybe very comfortable with addressing? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with addressing things head on. Yeah. Uh, and if I do, then I'll throw other bits in around it to so, sort of throw you off the scent, I suppose. Mm. Uh, there's, there's a poem, um, I've done Stuff Me, which is a list of things, some, some of them terrible, that, that I, I've done. Um, but there's obviously, there are obvious untruths in there. Mm. So people at the end will think, well, what, what's real and what isn't? But just, you said about um, hiding behind comedy. I kind of take issue with that a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> As I say, I think, um, as I said before, you know, you, you can you can reveal a lot of truths. Maybe that the truths are kind of between the lines. Mm. You know, um, so you make the you make the readers work a little bit harder yeah, to try yeah. and get to know you. Yeah, yeah and that's the right. And, and, I, I, and I think, but I think it's true. The, the, the earlier point you made about um, I am I am being a bit more upfront and mm -hmm. a bit more honest. I think. Um, that's, I think that just comes with more confidence. And, and I've seen so many, there's so many performers down here in the Southwest who are amazing at being brutally honest about mm. themselves. Um, and I, I mean, I just, I'm just full of admiration for those people. I, I can't be like that, uh, or I, I refuse to be like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess that is, a, that is changing mm. a bit. I don't think it's gonna change a lot. Maybe it's just part of your style. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's, I like I like what you said about uh, I make the reader work a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so on the theme of that, I I find this is a personal view that some of your what I sense is some of your poetry is like some anger, some aggression, mm. and some sadness. Yeah. So do you feel that you actually use writing as a way of dealing with your emotions? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, the, the anger thing is something that surprised me. When when I um, two years ago, when I when I got into the spoken word scene, I uh, I did sit down and start writing a lot more. And um, there was a period in the uh, in the autumn of twenty seventeen when every poem I wrote seemed to be angry, seemed yeah. to be really full of anger. It was about politics too at the time. A lot I of think. politics yeah. and social comments. Um, some of them were, were, were very abstract. Even that was was kind of angry. Mm. You know, it was like, um, this is going to be hard to understand, but, you know, so what? This is, And I was just, yeah. I was writing down um, words which just sounded good together. Mm. And, um, yeah, and I don't really know where that came from, but obviously it, it's in there, you know. Uh, and even um, 
recent poems, um, people see humour and anger in there. Um, I don't, I, I don't necessarily feel anger. Mm. Sometimes it just kind of manifests in, in a poem. Mm. Um, so you know, I, I guess I'm a typical repressed Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> if they made a film about me, Hugh Grant would play me. I okay, think. okay. I think you'd be ideal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing I, I noticed is there's a lot of catastrophizing and unfortunate <laughs> accidents. Catastrophizing, is that a word? Well, I've just made it up. Okay, I think it's okay. Um, so I, I just wonder, is this the way you, you know, some of the ways that you see life, like full of catastrophe and unfortunate <sighs> accidents? <laughs> You're talking about me bus driving again, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Not really, actually. I hadn't come to mind, but <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess when... Um, I, I don't suppose um, bad things happen any more to me than they do to, to other people. Mm. But yeah, I can be a bit of a, a drama queen, I think, when it comes to stuff going wrong. And, okay. um, and I will, you know, I, I'll kind of jump on those things that go wrong and they, they're going to go in a poem. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. You know. uh, is it because also they could a, be com they could be made humor with? Yeah, that, I was yeah. going to say there's a comedy element yeah. to that as well. I I, I love when I, when I read something and, and it might be something in a poem that's true that people think well that he's made that up. But sometimes there there are little nuggets that get in there that are mm. true and I hear people laughing. Uh, and I kind of like that because okay. you know it, maybe it was a disaster at the time, but. You know, it's not really a disaster, mm. uh, and if you can turn it into something that's funny, great. You know. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So now I'd like to invite you to read one and read and perform one of your poems. Would you do that right. for us? I will certainly do that for you. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to read. Um, I knew you were going to ask me this, so <laughs> I'm going to read a poem called Traces, which. Um, relates really to um, my uh, artistic endeavours because I'm a painter too and um, there's a sad thing there's a, there's a bittersweet thing with painting where you you fall in love with a painting that you, mm. you spent a lot of time on and then um, you sell it so that's fantastic but it's also very sad mm. because you no longer have that painting and I wrote this poem called Traces about that okay here we go I'd never, I'd never considered the sense of loss. My thoughts focused on being commercial, selling as many pictures as I could. It never entered my head that I viewed each completed work as a child, imbued with my own DNA. Yes, you want them to spread their wings, fly the nest, but departure is painful. To win, I have to learn how to lose. So, to compensate, I search for traces. For instance, those flecks of cerulean blue on the arm of my glasses that once coloured my Galician landscape and that little blob of lemon yellow still lingering on my laptop mouse from when I painted the portrait of the flamenco dancer. To lose, I had to learn how to die. In a jiffy bag, jealously guarded, outlined sketches of a wonderful abstract I poured my soul into. The buyer could see what I could see, and that gave me comfort. But I only have finite resources. Each time it happens, a little piece of me is taken. To die, I have to learn how to live. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'd like to just add a little bit of commentary after that because I hope that the people seeing this video can notice the difference that it is to be you being interviewed and feeling a little bit nervous and feeling mm -hmm. it feels almost like you feel a little bit insecure yeah and yeah, then yeah. when you step into this performance it just becomes so powerful your voice changes there's like dynamic and it's, it's almost like a a second character like so i hope that this also gives a little bit of taster a taster of what your live performance could be yeah and so. I would love you to tell us a bit more about where actually people can find out when you're performing and also tell us where you people can buy a copy of your book. Right, well thank you for that. Um, 
I'm on Facebook. I'm a bit of a Facebook addict, sadly. So um, when any events uh, and gigs that I'm doing in, in and around the Southwest, um, you can usually uh, find reference on on my Facebook page. Uh, Is it I also your, your personal page or my my um, I have a personal page. I also have an art page, the art of Derek Doran. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a page for the book. Everything rhymes with orange. Um, I I will I'm gigging around the southwest so uh, Gloucester, Stroud, Cheltenham, Swindon, um, all around that that part of the world. You can buy a copy of the book when you catch me at these gigs. I'll have uh, a small stash of them with me. You can also buy them on Amazon. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank yeah. you so much for this conversation. Thank you very much, Balash. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I hope everyone has enjoyed this snippet into Derek Doran's world. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.